Hello, it's me again, Sylvester. Uh, I just want us to focus on the test ledger. As you know that in the exam, you can be asked to compile either the test ledger or create or general ledger, or both, so you must add the general ledger. So when it comes to the test ledger, we, we normally call them subsidiary ledgers, okay? It's where we open the individual data, okay? Unlike under general ledger, whereby we record all the data together, not as individuals, okay? So I just want us to go through this exercise so that we can just get the basics right, okay? Okay, if you can check in this next slide, guys, make sure that you save this slide by the time when I start recording, you are not lost. Okay, so I'm going to open a, an account for Jody Jones. Okay, so Jody Jones is going to be the data that I'm going to focus on. So all the relevant information that affects him will be recorded in that particular account. Okay, but in the exam, as you maybe have seen before, they normally give you a lot of information. So they expect you to extract or only use the information that is relevant to that particular data. As you can see here, I've got the transactions from the 1st up to the 30th of what? Of April. So we need to only deal with what? Jones, okay? As you can see here, the following transactions have been extracted from the books of, okay, let's just say it's of Silmono Trails. Transactions include VAT at 14% where applicable. Yes, I know that currently the VAT is 15%, but because of, uh, for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to use 14%, okay? So please note this question so that by the time when I start recording, you can be able to follow because I cannot go back and forth uh, due to the system that I'm using because when I change the slides, it means I'll lose the, the previous information. Please, for now, pause a bit uh, this video. Make sure that you note this uh, transition so that by the time when I switch over to the next slide, you are able to follow. I think everyone is okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch over to the next slide, okay, so that I can record. As you can see here, I have got data ledger. As I said, in the data ledger is where we record the individual data. Here, I'm going to record Jody Jones as our data. So the first thing that we need to do is to put the opening months for this. As you can see, these books are for the month of April 2016, meaning our commencement date will be the 1st of April. So on the 1st of April, we'll have to make sure that we record the balances. So I'm going to say 1st of April 2016. Okay, that is the balance that I took from the information. You can see on the 1st, Jones owed Simona Traders 5690. So I'm going to come here and say balance. You can say balance put down in weight here, but I'm going to put it here as balance BD. Okay. I hope you are following. And the balance is given to us as, as you can see on number one, the balance is 5,690. So this is the first thing that you need to do. Okay. And remember, this person is a data. The rules of account equation will still apply. A data account increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side, irrespective of whether they ask you for general ledger or individual ledger in the form of a data ledger. It doesn't matter. The rules will stay the same. A data is an asset, and all assets will increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. That is the first thing that we need to record. Are you okay? I hope that everyone is following. Now I must go back to the information and check the next information that affects what? Jody. As I check on the second, they say as Jody's account has been outstanding for 60 days, Simono Traders charged him 35 rand 
interest. So we need to make sure that we go and ensure that on the 2nd of April 2016, we charged Jody. In other words, his account or her account is going to increase because of the interest. But let's check here. Under the document number, we need to come up with the source document. Which source documents do we use uh, and, uh, when we charge the interest? I think the best way to look at it is to check, firstly, under which journal do we normally record the interest? So we normally record the interest charged on accounts under the general journal. So the only source document that we can use under general journal is called general voucher. Okay. Unfortunately, here I don't have general voucher numbers. So obviously, if they gave you a voucher number, you're going to say general voucher and you write the voucher number, for example, JV7, JV3. Can you see now? So, but because I don't have any co uh, numbers for the source document, I'm just going to put source documents. And here we normally record them in the GJ, as I said. Because we are charging jury interest, it will mean that we need to increase. So under which side must we increase Jody? Jody is a debtor. Debtors increase on the debit side. So I'm going to say 35 rents. Okay. And thereafter, I will need to check uh, how much will be the new balance for Jody. Okay. So we need to make sure that we increase the previous balance by the 35 rent interest, which we had to charge. Okay. I think everyone is following. This is a very simple exercise, especially if you follow. So if you can check here, the balance from on the first was 5690. So you add 35. So it becomes 5725. It becomes 5725. Okay, that is the new balance. So every time you record, you must make sure that you've got a new balance. Now, let's check the next information where Jody is involved. I can see that Jody is involved on the 7th. So I'm going to go to the 7th and say 7th of April, okay, 2016. So what happened on that day? They say Jody paid Simono traders the amount owing. Remember, the amount owing is the current amount owing. It doesn't mean that Jody is paying the amount at the beginning. If Jody was only paying the amount at the beginning, they should have been very specific. So here we pay the amount before the 7th. So when we pay, we normally say, okay, where do we pay? Uh, where where does uh, where do we record this information from Jody? So Jody is paying us. It means we are receiving a receipt. So we need to have a receipt. And where do we record the receipt? Remember, in the cash book receipt or cash receipt journal. So Jody is paying us. Remember, Jody is paying us. It means Jody's account must decrease. Jody is a data. A data decrease on the credit side. So I must go to the credit side and I must make sure that I put 5725, the amount owing. As you can see, the balance before uh, the, 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 the seventh. So if you uh, put it on the credit side, it means at the moment Jody owes us nothing i hope everyone is following okay you just have to remember the technique and everything is going to be very 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 easy are you okay now we have to go and check the next transaction where jody is involved and um, if you check on the 10th they said we received bank statement stating that the bank has returned jody check Okay, dated on the 7th. So it means on the 7th, by the time when Jody paid us, Jody used a check. Unfortunately, due to some particular reasons, maybe it can be the insufficient funds, the check was returned by the bank as unpaid or as dishonored. Okay, so it means we need to reverse what we thought was paid to us. So on the 10th, we need to show this reversal on the 12th, okay? 
And then where do we normally record the reversal? The reversal is like a payment. So because it was a receipt, for us to reverse a receipt, it means we need to make it as what? As a payment. So we are going to make sure that we go and reverse it in the CBP. Remember, for you to cancel a receipt, you need to make sure that you record under the payments. But normally, this, the, this honored checks are shown on the bank statement. So the bank statement, in brackets, just write RD. Uh, RD means refer to drawer. It means it, it was referred to, to the drawer. And then where do we reverse it? In the cash book payments. Remember, the cash book payment is the same as the cash payments general. So we need to reverse what we think we received. We thought we received 5725. Now we put it on the debit side and reverse it so that it can show that Jody still owes us what? 5725. So this is very much important, guys. So we need to follow the information as it comes. I think everyone is following. Without wasting any further time, let's go check the next transaction where Judy is involved. On the uh, 15th, they say Jody uh, Jones apologized for the inconvenience cost and pays the amount owing in cash. So this guy is, is saying, sorry, I, I'm going to pay you now using cash the amount that you have reversed due to the insufficient funds so what we need to do we need to make sure that we show that entry the date is on the 15th i'm gonna write the 15th of april 2016 jody is paying us it means we need to receive and we must issue a receipt remember receipt is when we receive cash and where do we record this we record this in the cbr or crj and now remember if jody is paying us it means we need to decrease the account of jody on the credit side which is five seven two five and again we go back to it to zero so now we don't expect anything to be reversed or reversed by the bank because now she paid cash instead of using what check so at the moment she owes us zero i hope everyone is following once again okay now let's go and check the next information where jody is involved on the 25th simono traders sold, uh, sold jody jones inventory for four thousand excluding vet okay so we need to make sure that we calculate vet on this 4000 because we are vet registered business and the sale of goods needs to be inclusive of what of vet so we need to say on the 25th 2016 so we sold so when we sell goods on pay to a customer what do we issue we issue what we call the invoice. So we call it a credit invoice. Okay. And this credit invoice is remember the sales of inventory or the sales of goods are always in the debtors general. And again, the fact that we sold to Jody, it means Jody's account must increase on the debit side because a debtor increase on the debit side. Okay. But the amount that we need to record, we need to make sure that we calculate vet and include vet on that particular amount so we need to say on that on that four thousand we need to go and add vet so if you add vet on that four thousand it becomes four thousand five hundred and sixty so i'm gonna have four thousand five hundred and sixty okay those who don't understand how did i get this i can just show you how did i get this amount uh, and then uh, I just said, you can say 4,000 times 1.14. Remember, there are different ways of calculating that. Okay, that gives us what? 4,560. And now the new balance is 4,560. Okay, so that is what she owes us on the 25th. Are you okay? Uh, now we go to the next information where Jody is involved. When I check here on the 30th, 
uh, Simono traders decided to write off Judy's balance owing as re irrecoverable, meaning this uh, Jody became irrecoverable. It means we need to write her off as bad debts. Remember, the bad debts is the same as the credit losses. Okay, so we need to show that on the 30th of April 2016, uh, we have written off Jody. But what is the source document for writing off? As I said, if you struggle with the source document, just think about the subsidiary journal where we normally record the credit losses. Credit losses are always recorded in the general journal. So the only source document that can go to the general journal is called general voucher. So you can use uh, the subsidiary journals in order for you to be able to know which source documents we need to issue. And as I said, we are going to record this in the GJ. But remember, if you write off a data, it means at the end of the day, that debtor won't owe you that amount of money. He is not a debtor anymore. So by writing off, it means we are decreasing the account. So we need to go to the credit side to write off the amount owing. The amount owing will be the balance before the 30th, which is 4, 5, 60, because they said amount owing. So as I said, the amount owing must be the current balance. Okay. So if you put it on the credit side, it means you're going to have what zero because you just have to say the previous balance of 4560 minus what 4560 on the credit so in a nutshell whatever is on the debit side is going to be added to the previous balance whatever is on the credit side is going to be deducted from what the previous balance this is how the debtors ledger look like remember even if they can ask you for credit ledger the same technique is going to be followed it's just that the creditor will now increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. But the technique is the same. Don't have to change yourself. As long as you can be able to come up with the source documents, sometimes you can be lucky enough where they give you the source document numbers. By seeing that source document number, it is easy for you to uh, decide on the source documents that you need to, 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 to show. So, for example, when they say JV, can you see? That is a hint. It means general voucher. Okay. Sometimes they say REC. That means what? A receipt. So, please get acquainted with this. Practice, practice, guys. And I believe in you. I'm telling you, practice makes perfect. Talk about it. Talk about these things. They will make sense. As you know, there's this old song says, take time to know her. This means that, again, accounting you need to practice be patient enough i'm telling you it takes time to do accounting the only way to uh, do uh, to understand accounting is to do accounting i think you all understand this one guys and again i'm gonna maybe try to to, to record the, uh, the the other questions so that guys at least for exam you can get get better marks okay I wish you all the best, guys, especially those who are about to write exams. Please make sure that you practice a lot. Practice makes perfect, as you know. Thank you very much.